the 11th or the 12th of May, 2022. Thanks for tuning in to my official YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel. Go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com and share the link to my official YouTube video links through my website, www.susanmeeling.com. So I'm gonna go over, you know, what's, what is the definition of a birthday? Okay, well, obviously it's the day you're born. So I was born in the 1980s on the 29th of August. And so, which I guess is an irony when you think about the numbers. Anyway, when in reference to, I've had one birthday where it was at a McDonald's play place area for my time frame when I was in kindergarten. And then I had a semi-ish when I was turning 14 years old, or after I had essentially turned 14 years old, when I was a sophomore in high school. That was, that was my um, second birthday party by technicalities-ish, even though it was one, it was a sleepover with Jackie at the time. And then um, my sweet 16 slash bon voyage party, which was a last minute of course, and not anywhere that would be considered as a normal location. Sure, okay, in the long run, I can say that I had my Sweet 16 Bon Voyage party in Nap Chapel at Old Tenet Presbyterian Church. However, that's the facts, is I think. That, that was, and, the, and then, you know, how could I actually have a celebration of anything when my biological sister was involved when it was my sweet 16. And, but you know, the Bon Voyage party last minute in regards of that. And so, you know, what is it to have anything that's actually mine? I am rhetorical in my lecture question. And so, you know, those particular situations where each and every time if that could actually just not be a problem, that would have been great. But instead, you know, those who are the eldest, do you understand that? However, her birthday is in October in comparison. So it's one of those situations where literally just one of those overly entitled, bratty, spoiled types, in my opinion. That had a birthday party each year, every year, in comparison to what I grew up with. So then there's the situations regarding after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, because of course, before then, that was all I had. So as far as any birthday time experiences for those references. So then, after I woke up from my coma, after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, with the subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain, learning what headaches and migraines were, have learned that I have memory deficits and cognitive disorders and have gone from college algebra with trigonometry and calculus to second grade math, with the exception of the words. The first birthday that I had after that time in basic training was in the year of 2000. And so there was the Brackenridge situation not long before in regards to the rave in that regard, which again, I was taken off of a military installation by individuals that I had met on Fort Sam Houston in the particular barracks room or air barracks area of Fort Sam Houston. And that's how I had wound up in Austin at that particular rave through that particular group of individuals. 
and I've explained that it looked like Advil, apparently it wasn't, and then it looked like a Flintstone chewable birth control type of, as I've made a joke, because of uh, my son regarding uh, how certain children were acting. The birth, con birth control chewable vitamins that it's seen for some of those females because um, just the way they were acting in preschool, which was odd. And then I met some parents in certain references. I suppose maybe I shouldn't be surprised. Anyway, it's personal opinion. That is as it is, because then there's kindergarten. And those particular factors, nonetheless, so Brackenridge, the other two pills that looked like tulips, that were a lavender color that looked like Flintstone chewable vitamins is what the reference was. And so then, um, so that was my first birthday after waking up from a coma from my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000 during basic training. My second year awake from my coma when my birthday was when I was in labor for however many days before and however many days, well, like three days after regarding delivering my son into the world while having that subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, OBGYN and labor and delivery ward, they did not understand that after having been in labor for around seven-ish days, because it'd be a total of nine to 10 days when I was in labor, those OBGYN labor and delivery ward people did not understand why I was angry having been in labor as long as I was. Um, that that, uh, that OBGYN doctor was offended when I had informed him that his medical degree was an extremely expensive piece of toilet paper because of how many days I had been in labor in which he thought Again, it was a male, so he thought that I was overreacting after having been in labor for that long. Obviously, he had missed the fact that I was in labor on my birthday, but hey, you know, he, he thought I was overreacting to the Pitocin in, uh, shots at the same time of being in labor for as long as I had been, which was after my membranes were stripped. Mm -hmm. But yes, that male thought he was offended by my words, you know, and, and then the, the female nurse was offended that I did not want to get my blood pressure taken in the time frame when I was having a contraction who would know that that would be a really bad time other than someone who was in labor at the time and possibly anybody who has common sense, which that particular female was kicked across the room. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then she was offended because I had, had, I, because I had the sensation to defend myself from a blood pressure cuff. Okay, I can make fun of this. Yet at the same time, any female who has been in labor for more than 24 hours, you probably don't need to be in labor for seven days. Just hypothetically, I don't want to assume. However, hypothetically, any female who's been in labor for longer, you probably don't even need 24 hours to be in labor to not, not need the description as to when a contraction is being registered by the monitor to take a blood pressure reading. You know, I did not go to medical school. However, you may have an elevated blood pressure reading, hypothetically, during the time frame of a growing contraction. In the labor and delivery ward, I don't want to presume anything. However, I didn't go to medical school. That guy did, and he was offended that I had told him his degree was an extremely expensive piece of toilet paper because of quite a few situations at that point in time, though there were a few times 
Hypothetically, I informed him of my opinion. <laughs> and any female who has been in labor probably, once again, doesn't need to be in labor for 24 hours or longer, could possibly hypothetically point out that Pitocin, on top of that, maybe there's a medical professional who could go into that detail. Additionally, who could say hypothetically that doing a blood pressure reading when a contraction is growing on the monitor while having Pitocin after having been in labor for several days, which is, you know, maybe, maybe, I don't want to assume, again, I didn't go to medical school like the male who had gotten that extremely expensive piece of, you know, he called it a degree, but nonetheless, um, the, the offense in his ego, because, you know, who, who, who would imagine that the blood pressure reading might be elevated? Which, for the clarification, after she picked herself up off of the ground, she was that adamant to get my blood pressure reading. She put that blood pressure cuff on my arm to make sure that that happened. And, um, and then after the, 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 the monitor had done the blood pressure reading, surprise! She was actually surprised that my blood pressure was elevated at the time of, and here's the kicker, the contraction reading machine had shown that my contractions were still increasing at that point in time. But you know what? This person who went to RN medical school, whatever, what have you, degree, piece of paper was surprised and then she wanted to do a second reading, you know, in the same time frame as this contraction was still growing. Yes, this is, this is what, she, it, that's what Wilford Hall claims is intelligence in the medical field. So that's my second birthday, being awake from my coma after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000 during basic training. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's technically better-ish than my second birthday um, to a degree, and yet, eh, you know, eh, let's be honest for those who have met my biological mother and biological father. And so, you know, so my third time frame of being awake from my coma, I was dealing with the McDonald birthday situation mm -hmm. regarding Forest Hill and my son's birthday. My ex-in-laws and that whole what have you and over that and uh, having to break up a fight because of and that whole thing. And so my fourth birthday technically being awake from my coma with my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000 um, still had that subarachnoid hemorrhage, frontal lobe of my brain, and so that my biological sister had been moved to the state of Texas, mm -hmm. and it was during the first week and a half of school. So then there's that, that's, 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 that's my third or fourth birthday being awake by technicalities. So my fifth birthday of being awake <laughs> from my coma after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, in the year of 2004, would be, I believe it was called Hurricane Katrina. I'm fairly certain that's what that was. And so then there was Wilford Hall, not very long before it, in reference to my biological mother and that whole situation. And, uh, and all of that, and, and it was during the first separation time frame, mm -hmm. and that whole kit and caboodle. Then there's my sixth birthday awake from my coma, the year of 2000, wait, no, no, that was 2005, so okay, that's the sixth birthday, because, you know, t t so 2000 is the first birthday, 2001 is the second birthday, 2000. Two is my third birthday, 2003 is my fourth birthday, 
2004 is my fifth birthday. So yeah, that was a separation. 2005 would be my sixth birthday. That was Lackland Air Force Base Wilford Hall with that situation. And Hurricane Katrina, apparently. And all in one, you know. Then 2006 would be my seventh birthday. So that was the beginning of the second and final separation. And then, you know, the first time I ever had birthday presents-ish and the dress blue uniform situation, all in one. Then my eighth birthday being awake from my coma after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000 with the subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain that was still there. I was volunteering at Nine Lives Books while dealing with the cat sanctuary at Nine Lives Books. And my children's biological father now dead ex-husband, was on his way back from Iraq to Fort Sam Houston to be in what would be warrior transition unit in comparison to medical hold unit before that whole kit and caboodle, okay? And that whole situation with the explanation of the dress blues and that whole thing in a few months from there. And then, then the Ninth birthday would be the year of 2008. And so then there was Grandpa Nichols and his funeral. So that kind of put a kibosh on any aspect of what could have been considered because, you know, I'm about life. So then what would be my 10th birthday, awake from my coma, the first year since the subarachnoid hemorrhage had been completely gone and dissipated from my MRI and CAT scans. First year, first 12 months, completely clear of that. Well, I had gone to the Vandenberg and back, was dealing with that sort of stuff on my own while being a mom of two children and that whole McCoy Elementary School system situation. Yeah, that whole thing. And yeah, okay, you know, it was a couple of weeks after that whole thing regarding the Cozumel whatever, because of, you know, that. So that was, that was my first, you know, yay, I suppose. So my first birthday to actually celebrate anything which would be ironic because of 10 and one and zero. Well, then there was that and that whole thing. And so then, you know, what would be my 11th, but my ugh, second birthday from my scuba diving, but 11th birthday for, or 12th birthday from, or t no 11th birthday from being awake from a coma from a head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000 from basic training at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, would be 2010. And there was that situation going on. And, and then I was in Austin as a Republican and everybody knows how the politics were during 44 for the President of the United States of America. So I was in Austin looking as I do as a Republican while my daughter was in the hospital out there after what happened at the Fort Worth Zoo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, 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 no. What is, what is celebration? I don't know. I've been capable to celebrate my son and my daughter's birthday where I could. Uh, each one of their birthday, I've sent them to school with some, you know, cupcakes or something like that. Do a, a dinner special, something, another kind of figured that like my ex-in-laws and or my biological mother and or biological father and or biological sister would actually speak with me. But you know, the irony of irony when they were as nosy and intrusive as they were, why would they? That would be common sense to actually discuss and have communication, but those are those people and that's their problem at this point. So then, there because that's just, they didn't have any common sense, obviously. So then there's, there's that year. So then there's 2011, which, okay, in 2010, was getting back together with the guy who I was kind of engaged to. Then there was 2011. 
And so for the third year since my scuba diving, nobody has celebrated anything with me regarding up to that point in time, or even now in 2022. However, you know, that would be the first by technicalities birthday that I had ever had. But my daughter was in Arkansas as far as a hospital. And well, yes, I got to have time with my son. So that was, that was my birthday for the, you know, 12th one since being awake from my coma. After my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, and there were a few situations regarding that. So then there's 2012, which would be, you know, my technically, my, or wait, the, the 2011 would be my, my second birthday a week, or like a third because of the time frame. Nonetheless, there is also Irving at that time in 2011. So, I mean, I guess, I guess by technicalities, I had a little bit of an interstellar birthday party-ish. But when you really think about it, it really did not necessarily a party in what I would consider a party. Um, <laughs> I've been to a few, so maybe I have a bit of a bias. I could be a little kooky for that, you know, thinking that it should be on earth and something that's actually enjoyable. But you know, <laughs> is what it is. So there's 2012, you know, 13 years since I woke up from a coma after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. And you know, a whole four since having been in scuba diving in those situations. So that's, that's a, uh, there's that. And so there was the time frame where my daughter was in a different hospital and doing what I could for my son while dealing with what happened at the emergency room at Fort Sam Houston's BAMC, now SAMC. Um, which is, you know, a few years after what had occurred in 2008 on a different floor in that same hospital regarding Major General Gilman's office. And so there's that. Celeb I don't think that's really obviously common sense for that. And because uh, that's obviously not a celebration. Although there was time with some CPS guys at that hospital because of what was going on with my daughter and the insurance company at that time. And so there was that. Then, um, 2013, well, um, was in Washington State. Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 There was the, that was that for that time frame. Mm-hmm. Brand new state that looked, you know, uh, through botany, similar to New Jersey and New York State and Pennsylvania, but on the complete opposite side of the United States of America. Yes. So then there's 2014. And so, okay, I was beginning my Medal of Honor art project, finishing up some of my books and compiling stuff. Um, as far as that's concerned, so for, you know, my 15th birthday being awake from my coma after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, and, you know, my fifth birthday from my scuba diving and all that, as far as the work I did, earning 26 scuba diving certifications, landed at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico a bunch of times, the bottom of the Atlantic area of the ocean, both at Boca as well as the Vandenberg. But you know, up in Washington state and dealing with that, mm -hmm, so that was, that was 2014. 2015, you know, I had, um, still been working on my Medal of Honor art project trip stuff for my artwork. Had not had any point in time 
where I ever actually celebrated any of the books I authored, wrote, or compiled together at any point in time. Because, you know, what would there be to celebrate regarding that? Um, you would think that there would be something to celebrate, however, I was in the situation I was in. And so, you know, then there's my website that I had created and, you know, I mean, what's celebratory about that? And I mean, maybe there could be something I wouldn't know. I personally haven't had that luxury. I did create my journal blog that year. I did not have a celebration as far as that was concerned. I, you know, I really don't know what a celebration is for anything I've done to be honest, because that would require me to be at one. Um, so then there's 2016, and okay, yet again, um, just not any, uh, anything to, um, you know, really report, pun intended, on as far as my birthday, except in a little bit from that point in time, I would get to go to a Dustin Lynch concert by myself. Because, you know, that's, that was the gift that I was given to go to a concert by myself. You know, while dealing with headaches and migraines, mm -hmm. memory deficits and cognitive disorders, yeah, a country music concert. Uh-huh, right in the VIP section near the speakers. Yeah, uh-huh, common sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then uh, 2017, well, hey, I decided to do something on my own for my own birthday. That was during the solar eclipse in the year 2017, which kind of worked out because it was one of those, well, I will have a, I will schedule that for myself to enjoy because apparently there hasn't been anybody at any point in time that would ever think at all, you know, human decency and stuff. Personal opinion, I might be a little biased, but it is as it is. So then, you know, 2018, well, my son wanted to graduate high school early to go to the army, okay, did what I could, regards of taking care of that. Then there was the situation in regards of how my son and I wound up in Washington State and that whole thing. So then briefly after that, I had gotten my apartment squared away, but that would be later. So then August of 2019, um, well then there's that where I had the first birthday where my son actually said happy birthday to me for once. Um, yeah, <laughs> it is as it is. He was a child, my daughter being a child, I didn't hold them to the same standards because they're children. And so, you know, unlike who should be responsible adults, if, you, if, if they actually were in comparison to what I dealt with. So then there's 2019, that whole thing, okay. Hurricane Dorian moved the hurricane, the Periscope videos, all that stuff. So then there's 2020, and uh, well, it was the 2020 election time frame, and so there's that, and those particular situations. Then there was 2021, however, because it was the 20-year uh, memorial just before, um, you know, just in around... 12, 13, 14, 15 days, you know, it kind of seemed a little needing to take a step back because of that, out of respect for where I was born and raised in New Jersey and New York, so kind of, you know, had some common courtesy in those references, and so then, now there's 2022. And yet, <laughs> well, now there's the little bit of a conundrum because there's all these other situations instead. And so the 
first and yet not first and yet first and yet not first and yet first and yet not first birthday that I could technically celebrate. Well, what is there to actually celebrate? Sure, okay, I had authored a few more books since then, worked on a few other whatevers, but you know, just a, just a thought process in those particular references, that's, that's, that's what I'm looking at, and so then there's, you know, all those, those prior birthdays, so, you know, oh, well, I should say they were days, in each year that had been the day of my birth, however, those particular actual situations. So, you know, kind of just thinking to myself, well, what is there to celebrate? Although by technicalities, also who to actually celebrate with, because, well, who would there actually be? when really taking that in consideration because it's 2022. So, you know, there's those factors in reference to my son and my daughter. However, those are different situations and they're biological adults now in those factors and don't really want to have anything to do with my ex-in-laws, obviously. Um, then there's my biological mother, biological father, and biological sister. and being honest on those particular needless problems over the years and in those hypotheticals, of course. So then, you know, then there's those other situations. And I mean, you know, when there's 26 scuba diving certifications I earned and all the work that I have, I have completed, it's one of those, well, you know, what has there been to actually celebrate with? me, because I'm the one who did the work, I, I mean, you'd think that that would be how you'd celebrate, but what would I know? Um, because I, I wouldn't, is the answer rhetorically for this lecture, because in order for me to actually celebrate, there'd actually be a reason to with people that I would know and recognize. And so in that comparison, and so there's that, and so mm-hmm yeah yeah that's kind of that's kind of where that's been and those particular references it's only just going on 40 years of this that's all uh-huh and you know what i'm not even by tech i wasn't baptized a jehovah witness although i have seen a lot and so you know i was baptized methodist first and then baptized presbyterian but that is as it is. So yeah, that's just kind of the, the, the reality of what I've dealt with, you know? So for all of those individuals that I've uh, known over the years, it's one of those situations. And so here's a, here's a thing I had discussed with how I had wound up in Washington State because why would it be any other way than actually having a discussion with me, but that would require actually having a discussion with me in comparison to speaking with someone who shouldn't be talking to people at Club Sapphire, because why would that individual be speaking with people at Club Sapphire unless people from Club Sapphire decided to contact in comparison to that privacy agreement regarding that paperwork? And so, you know, I had said that I didn't want to do the normal birthday thing that they had done from what I had seen, which what that normal was in comparison. I didn't go into any details of what I'd actually prefer because why would I ever think that Club Sapphire would be in contact with someone who didn't attend the club unless there was that and that wasn't discussed or agreed to or anything in those capacities of. And so then there's that common sense factor because why would that actually be common sense other than it would be considered as common sense. Also human decency. However, my opinion, okay, and so there wasn't any point in time because I had seen what had been and okay it is what it is but eh, 
you know, for the normalcies regarding that because of not feeling comfortable with certain things, but because of how I had been regarding volunteering, that would have been more ideal, but that would be common sense in those particular references. And more preferable, but that is what it is because common sense. And so instead, this will be the first year that by technicalities I could, and yet, and yet I can't because I have work I have to do. And that would require me to actually be to the level of that. And well, <laughs> What is there to actually celebrate after all these years? I mean, sure, there's been some stuff that I could technically celebrate, but then at that same point in time, what is there to actually celebrate? I mean, it would realistically be up to people that if you have common sense and you're not haughty, um, you, in my opinion, it would be, well, those who would actually appreciate that, having the common sense to actually ask what it would be regarding, again, though, asking the one and only what that would actually translate to in comparison, because I deal with headaches constantly. There is not one second in the day of any day since waking up from my coma that I haven't had headache pain because of if I had it where I didn't deal with headache pain then that would be a miracle however I've been dealing with headache pain this whole time right now currently I'm at about a seven and a half as far as headache pain that's not migraine level, that's different. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, but I've been dealing with the headache since 2000, after waking up from a coma, after my head injury on Palm Sunday during basic training. So that's just that. And so, you know, um, but you know, that would also be being alive without having that headache pain. And mm, that's just, uh, and, and capable to do things and, you know, actually live life in comparison. And so, um, regarding to the aspects of birthday celebration stuff. So, you know, that's, that's kind of where that's been instead, because what would there ever be to actually celebrate a birthday, um, or anything that I've personally accomplished? I don't know. I haven't ever had that luxury. So, well, all sorts of whatever, as far as all sorts of other people stuff, um, that's, that's what they've had in comparison. So while there are those who have gotten into that social media viewpoint, if you assumed in the years more specifically of 2009, through 2013, possibly. Yes, let me clarify for you the reality, so that way you can have that illusion fully removed from your sight. That's been the reality. So if in reference of from back in 2000 through 2021, by technicalities, even though this is the year of 2022, that's something you can take in consideration. And so, because of the development of technology, so that's that. And so, you know, for all those individuals that hypothetically had whatever opinions during those time frames in comparison to what the reality actually was, that's the reality. So if in that hypothetical, my biological bitter mother and my biological bitter father and my biological bitter sister had any issues in regards of some 
whatever as far as that's concerned. Well, in the year of 1996, I did get to meet with Governor Christine Todd Whitman. That wasn't celebrated, by the way, because I earned that. Um, but I got to meet Governor Christine Todd Whitman because of a poster that I had created with pastels. And I asked about how to fix the mental health crisis. Well, hmm, I guess it's an irony as far as um, my biological father's name being Mike, so the first initial. My biological mother, her name is Anna. And then my biological sister, her name is Patricia. And so I found a map of patterns of behaviors that hypothetically might assist with uh, certain details. I also have an additional aspect in regards to my ex-in-laws as far as the hypotheticals there, as far as what patterns of behavior could possibly be found. And, 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 since one of my biological sisters is named Mary, so you have the M, mm -hmm. one of her daughters is named Ariel. And I'll say, mm-hmm. And, and, okay, I don't know what David's middle name is though I did date a male with the name of Patrick. Though, the additional part is their dead relative had the funerary rites through the Holy Roman Catholic Church at St. Patrick's Cathedral. So either way, the technicalities a map squared, although not making fun of E equals MC squared at all. However, he might be capable to find some very dry, pun intended, because of humor. Because apparently, <laughs> depending on how twisted his sense of humor could be. However, that by technicalities would be two maps, or as, from one stone. <laughs> Because, you know, well, um, I'm, I, I mean, you know, I did find a petrified coral from Cozumel area. Not the only one. I mean, the first one I had was out from uh, the Atlantic area. That's, that's the first one I found. It was a smaller version, that Gulf of Mexico one. That one, in regards to what I thought, because if the if if anybody remembers from the Gulf of Mexico, Cozumel, I was looking at it quite confusedly, of course, and I did write about it in my uh, three-volume trilogy, The Adventures of Susan Meeling, Scuba Diver Extraordinaire. If you go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com, in my book section, you find that. Nonetheless, I had. I had been looking at it and I didn't understand what it was. And so one of the male who had been my roommate at the time had said, oh, it's a brain coral that's been petrified and oh. And so before I could say anything, he had made his, you know, jokes and everything. And it's like, oh, yeah, except I've found these before. I, I, I've had a few in my childhood and teenage years. It's usually a thank you gift to me. So, you know. Cool, thanks for letting me know. Awesome, I tend to find them very easily. So, cool, awesome, thanks. And so usually, and so there were a few times where I've had, and that one was so small compared to, but that is what it is as far as the brain corals that I've, you know, usually when I've taken care of a few things, usually when it's like a really big issue, usually that's along the lines of something that's um, from whether you believe in mer people or whatever words of, usually that's a, a gift that I get um, from that. So I guess at minimum, but you know, I mean, it's just kind of sad that, you know, human beings as far as celebrations, because of course, 
there would be those bratty, spoiled types that no matter how many birthday parties they've had with human beings, they'd complain because yeah, you did it, baby, 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 baby. because that'd be my biological sister because she did that when we were children. And so because usually I'd go to the beach and at some point in time I'd come back with some specialty seashell of something and this because and anybody who has met my biological sister, you know exactly what that is as far as that whining. And so, yeah, so how dare, and, and, and then she didn't even pay attention to that I had earned it because then there's those factors because what is there to celebrate, you know, being in an international Taekwondo competition and getting to that point, which is the equivalent of the Olympics of Taekwondo when I was 12 years old, but you know, what would there be to celebrate any of those victories that I had earned to be capable to even attend that? And then what would there be to actually celebrate that I placed second in spar or second in second and third place in sparring and form, so second in sparring, third in form. In an international competition where I was a green belt, what would be, you know, because I actually earned that. And so, you know, but we celebrated my biological sister's recitals. Compared to Just pointing that out there. So, um, you know, because what would there be to actually celebrate that year even, you know? Oh, but there was Baptist Camp Lebanon a little bit later after the Governor Christine Todd Whitman thing and uh, second and third place inspiring in form. So there's not really a celebration, obviously, regarding that on my 13th birthday and then that other stuff so yeah 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 that's that's that so then uh, anything that I've ever actually you know because my biological sister would complain because anything that I ever earned on my own you know that's that's all she ever did because what would it it, it, it physically pained her to ever say anything positive and so there's not one point in time where there's ever actually been a genuine congratulations from that because that's just how she's always been. And so, you know, unlike the way I grew up being. And so anybody who's gotten a congratulations from me, I genuinely meant it. Same thing with a compliment. I can't say the same when it comes to my biological sister because you'd be capable to tell how much it actually pained her because she would sound like a robot because of how many times she would actually have to practice it in comparison to just being genuine, hypothetically. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but that's maybe that's what happens with those uh, dance recital types. I don't know. Um, it is what it is. So there's that. And, um, but then after that or even before that or what have you what has there ever been for an actual genuine appreciation for anything that i've actually accomplished on my own so then there's that and while i'm sure my biological sister would complain that i wasn't at her graduations well i had called and asked and it was at the behest of you know, those temper tantrum types because of, in comparison to ever taking in consideration anything of value or worth because of her issues regarding my children's biological father and my dead ex-husband, her feelings for that in comparison, but it stemmed from childhood. So she just realistically was gonna be that way no matter what. Because again, in order for my biological sister to actually ever do anything where she actually appreciates someone else's work, well, they have to be a male for that. Because otherwise, she, does, she has that feminazi view 
as a stereotype regarding that because why would she ever do anything that'd be of value on her own, in my opinion, without leeching onto someone else or riding somebody else's coattails just on her own work. I don't personally know. I haven't ever seen a point in time where she's ever done that. So I could be inaccurate. I'm fairly certain I'm accurate there to this day. So it is what it is. Although the irony is every time she's always complained about that. And it's one of those, well, how about you go and do something that you actually earn on your own in comparison to riding the coattails of someone else. And then you wouldn't have to be like, Susan, 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 sort of situation. Cause that's just the way it's been since my childhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just randomly because I earned things on my own. So I did track and field, which you earn things on your own. And then martial arts where you earn things on your own. I also was in swimming where you earn things on your own and gymnastics where you earn things on your own in comparison to dance where it's whatever with whatever group of whatever, whatever. And then that sort of continued pattern of behavior. So yeah, 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 that's, that's, I did make attempts to explain that to her, but it was as it was in those particular references. And then because I played the flute and the piccolo in comparison, then those particular little temper tantrums additionally, mm -hmm, yes. So that's how that was and it is as it is. So anybody that she's hypothetically ever complained to and be honest on that, which would possibly be a lot more than even from my journal blog updates from the year 2019, because those who have known my biological sister over the years, she is four years younger than I am, but she's probably complained hypothetically far more than just the updates from 2019 to now in 2022, because that's obviously just three years in comparison to that. However, those who actually know her would be capable to justify whether or not my biological sister complained more in the time frame of or less amount of times in that three years. And so it is what it is. However, you know, what has there ever been to actually celebrate? I don't know. I mean, I could think of a few things, but that would require people I've known over the years to actually be happy for me or proud in that regard of, you know. So instead, I've just continued pushing forward because I kind of figured, you know, either I'll get to a point where I could actually do something to celebrate, which I did in 2009. I was about to bring that up when I had gotten back from the Vandenberg. However, that went the way that did. And so that was the first year that I could think of to actually do that. And instead it went the way it did because why would there ever be an actual celebration? other than to actually celebrate, but that would require actually doing that in the in-person, face-to-face in-person ways. And so, you know, it's kind of funny. I almost have this sensation of if, for those who know um, the nanny, you know, it's it, this almost is like a, if the character Gracie were to have grown up, in the show, and this sort of <laughs> kind of breakdown, sort of in regards of the years. <laughs> because obviously I don't look as good as Nanny Fine did. I wish I did, cause that hair. I, and then, you know, her outfits and stuff like that, I wish. I wish, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I can do the, I can do the, the nanny fine impression 
you know, where it's hat sort of thing. <laughs> oh, Mr. Sheffield. And so... <laughs> I wouldn't know if anybody actually has the last name of Sheffield, though that would be, I'm sure, I'm sure, I mean, I was born and raised in New Jersey. That would be funny, though, if there was a guy with the last name of Sheffield. He was like, well, you know. <laughs> the irony of that. Nonetheless, you know, and then he'd obviously have to know what a Yanta and a Yaddy are, so, you know. <laughs> in comparison and nanny fine didn't ever wear corsets so you know but she did always those suits were always so cute those were the only types of suits i really liked as far as females to a degree it was kind of like so whatever and you know i wish i could have hair like that <laughs> especially now after my headaches and migraines i do have to acknowledge when I did have to deal with being in that beauty pageant, which I didn't want to, <laughs> as far as what I had for my hairstyle, I had thought, what would what would Nanny Fai have done with her hair as far as the tendrils and stuff? And so that was the backwards French braid and then, you know, the little curls and stuff. But I couldn't get it as big and poofy as, as I know her name's Fran Drescher. But... <laughs> I, I did think about that, although the irony is I hadn't actually seen what she looked as because of when I first found out about the nanny. And so, yeah, that was kind of irony of ironies. So I actually didn't actually get to see what she looked as until something like, what was it? I think it was the year of 2020 when they had the little reunion show. And it's like, well, is that what they look at? Is that what? In my turtle thoughts, well, is that's what they look at. Oh, well, okay. Hi. <laughs> irony, irony. So, you know, bet you. <laughs> Though I could easily see in certain references again, those fires. <laughs> if Gracie were to have grown up and then evaluated but it'd be in the opposite viewpoint because it'd be what was the eldest to his um uh, maggie it would be maggie in that regards which is an irony and a different reference but yeah because then there's the and then maggie and then this and then so then i evaluated this particular situation and then turned this into and so the i i can go into this lecture very easily but hey hey I thought of a pop culture reference. <laughs> Boom. And so... <laughs> Ta-da! And so that, that, that'd be kind of funny if there's actually... Because then, you know, the, this is the irony for those who know about the nanny and Mr. Sutton, you know, because you got to do it with the... With it's the Sheffield. Um, <laughs> those who know the plot line, Max, well, Sheffield was in competition with this one particular guy who kind of, which this is an irony because <laughs> this guy, he had, he had done this Broadway play thing. Okay, and I happen to have been in, if I remember correctly, regarding St. John Vianney High School, you know, there's one singular sensation, every little step she takes. <laughs> one thrilling combination, every move that she makes. One smile and suddenly nobody else will do. <laughs> Which is funny because I think that if I remember correctly, Maxwell Sheffield's character, 
I think that that was the guy. I think so. I th I'm fairly certain. <laughs> you know who won. <laughs> Thrilling combination. Every little thing. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. Pun intended. And... <laughs> Go to my website, www.susanbeeling.com. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel and share my official YouTube video links. And if you're going to leave a comment, please do make sure to have etiquette and respect. You guys have a good day on the 12th of May, 2022. See, it's Thursday, <laughs> the 22nd year after the year of 2000, because that's the math, <laughs> on the 12th of May, 2022.